afternoon news update on Souk News. Hello and welcome to News Flash. I am Grace Komolafe. Today we shall be intimating you with news stories from Abuja, Enugu and far away in Kenya and some other parts of the world. Please stay with us. In order to boost agricultural production, generate employment opportunities for youth and address food insecurity, the Minister of the FCT, Yesom Wiki, has revealed plans to partner with Israeli experts to advance technology-based farming in the Federal Capital Territory. He disclosed this during a court visit by the Israeli ambassador to Nigeria, Mr. Michael Freeman. Wiki also stressed the importance of collaborating with credible individuals and organizations mentioning the administration's initiative to create a technology village. He further clarified that recent directives on ground rent payment were part of efforts to improve revenue generation and were not intended to embarrass any individuals or organizations. The African Export Import Bank Afrezim Bank is actively seeking international sources to raise the $3 billion loan it agreed upon with the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NLPCL, in a move aimed at promoting agriculture and food production in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. The loan is not only intended to support NNPCL, but also to enhance foreign exchange liquidity with the aim of stabilizing the Naira in the FX market. To address the funding gap, Afrexim Bank is exploring partnerships with top-notch banks globally, including those in the United States, Singapore and India. The bank has been discussing strategies to secure this loan from reputable financial institutions such as JP Morgan Chase and Citigroup, among others. And from the eastern part of Nigeria, Enugu state government has announced its plan to achieve $30 billion in economic growth over an eight-year period through its collaboration with Nigeria, Indonesia Trade and Investment. This was revealed in the statement by the state during a joint press conference between the Indonesian and Enugu government. That's the primary goal aimed to create a platform that fosters mutual prosperity and encourage international collaboration. The state government expressed optimism about this collaboration and foresees a long-term partnership with the Indonesian government, noting that this partnership would not only promote mutual prosperity, but also will attract capital investment and encourage the diversification of Indonesian industry into the state. Ministries and state departments in Kenya are set to implement a 10% reduction in recurrent expenditure to align with the country's budget deficit challenges. The country lifted the moratorium on the issuance of new mining rights, which had been imposed in 2019. It also removed the prohibition of traditional and customary artisanal mining, allowing over 800,000 workers in the sector to form cooperatives or groups to obtain group permits. The decision which will cover every ministry, departments and agencies was reached during a meeting chaired by President William Ruto at the State House in line with the country's need for prudent resource utilization and the elimination of wastage and corruption through the commitment to a zero-fault audit. This audit will cover every ministry, department and agency, ensuring that none enters the 2024-2025 financial year with unaudited accounts. Additionally, the cabinet approved the gambling policy 2023, the gambling control bill 2023 and the national lottery bill 2023 with the aim of modernizing Kenya's gambling and betting regulatory framework and curbing money laundering while promoting responsible betting and giving practices. Still on foreign news, U.S. Ambassador to the United Arab Emirates, UAE, Martina Strong, has expressed the United States' role as the most significant foreign policy actor in the Middle East. The statement comes amid evolving dynamics in the region, including the U.S. push for normalized relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia, 
and the U.S. response to China's increasing influence. While the Biden administration had previously expressed concern about OPEC's oil production decision, it has remained relatively quiet on recent output curves, even as oil prices approach $100 per barrel. She cited President Biden's vision for collaboration with the region, which is founded on diplomacy, deterrence, de-escalation, and ultimately prosperity, stressing the joint efforts to address the climate crisis, with the UAE set to host the COP28 climate conference later this year. And on a wrap, let's close with a social media report. TikTok Indonesia has announced its decision to cease e-commerce transaction on its marketplace to adhere to new local regulations. The move comes in response to an ultimatum from the Indonesian Ministry of Trade, which demanded that TikTok remove its e-commerce features and become a standalone app within a week or risk being shut down. TikTok has emphasized its commitment to compliance with local laws and regulations, stating that it would no longer facilitate e-commerce transactions on TikTok Shop Indonesia after October 4, and these new regulations could pose challenges to TikTok's Southeast Asian expansion plans. And it's been a great time sharing with you news flash updates on Suk News. Thank you for your consistent presence. Do not forget to share with friends and families and follow us on all our social media platforms for more updates. I am Grace Komolafe. Good afternoon.